Hey everyone, my name is Andy. I'm from the Finding Value Finance channel. Uh, today I have with us <clears throat> Casper Rasmussen, uh, known as Uslink. If you're gonna try to follow him on Twitter, he's got lots of really good long-term charts, definitely commodity focused and driven. So I wanted to get him back on the channel. Is this your third time or second time? I can't remember, third? Yeah, third, yeah, third, third yeah. right? I think it was a month ago since last time, <clears throat> so roughly. So. Uh... It's so nice to be back for, for sure. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it for coming back on. <clears throat> My pleasure. So let's start with real estate. I guess you just bought and sold a house. How to, how to yeah. go? What's your experience? Um, well, we, uh, as I, I think I mentioned last time, we we're going to have uh, our baby number four, which in itself is pretty insane. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't planned. So uh, yeah, it is what it is. So we needed a bigger house. Uh, right now, the house we have here is uh, 160 square. Uh, square meters so you can calculate, calculate that into to footage um, but um, so it's definitely too small and we need a bigger house so uh, another house came on the market you know like 300 meters away and actually we were the first couple to see it and the same day there were like three or four other couples seeing that house and actually within th uh, three days you know we, there was a bidding war on that house me and the other three or four couples and we ended up winning it so that was was pretty fine um, so it went very fast uh, compared to what most pe people think. I mean, if uh, uh, if you are the you know demographic at the right place, you know, and if it is it is a good house, there is definitely bias in the market that is willing to buy, even though the rates are at like I think it's five percent in Denmark. The thirty-year fixed is is five percent. So uh, so we had we had to act very quickly in order to get this house. Um, and the same for uh, for the house we have here. We actually uh, we are going to sign the deal tomorrow. And uh, there was one couple out. Uh, they they saw the house two weeks ago, and then they had to to do some. They had to talk to the bank and so on just to get everything set. But they also bought it, you know, almost right away. Um, so so right now, at least here in Denmark, I don't think the uh, the housing uh, crisis that everyone is talking about is is that bad. Um, it might be in the future, but but right now it's definitely not crashing. It, it, it has slowed down, yes, for sure. But uh, there are a lot of buyers right now, uh, at least young couples actually that wants to get into the market uh, in these in these days and these uh, these times for sure. So, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing the same thing where I live, Colorado Springs. It's slowing down a little bit, but there's still a lot of buyers, still a lot yeah. of movement. Um, it, obviously, it wasn't like 2021, but uh, no, I don't no, think no, there no, was. No. Yeah, there, I don't think there's too many, uh, too many times in history that 2021, <laughs> it was basically an anomaly. But yeah, it's still actually it's do, still a tight market. <clears throat> hmm? Yeah, do you know what the uh, the 30 year fixed mortgage rate was at the bottom or at the at the peak of the housing boom here in Denmark in thir in, in 2021? What, what was it? Zero. <laughs> you, you you could have a 40 a 40 year uh, a 30 year mortgage, you know, at a zero percent. Is your is yours guys uh, fixed fixed rates? No, not not this one right now. But I'm selling it, so it doesn't matter. But the ones I will get, you know, at the other house will be. Uh, I can't remember if it is four or five percent right now in Denmark, but you know, at the lowest mm -hmm. point it was zero at one point. Absolutely so you, insane. So. So you guys get thirty year fixed rate mortgages though, right? Uh, yeah, for two? that's yeah, that's the most common one we get. Okay, but you can also get it's the like fixed, that you know, one year or five year or whatever. But you can get a, a thirty year, which is. The most common thing, I guess, especially after you know uh, the housing crisis in 08. I mean, I, uh, a lot of people took you know after that are using you know fixed mortgage rates, uh, mortgage uh, for sure. So okay, so talking about the markets, I know you posted some stuff on Twitter. I was you know I follow you, <clears throat> and you had you had a uranium and precious metals chart that you had posted up. I thought it looked pretty cool. It was a ratio chart versus a ratio chart. Uh, you basically said kind of high level, like if you're a uranium bull, you should also be looking at precious metals. Maybe uh, give pull up that chart, give a little bit of explanation yeah, sure. and, and kind of what you were talking about there. Just need to share my screen. Just <clears throat> one second. Uh, we're going to take uh, one second. Yes. Just let me know when you can see. Yep, we're good. You can. you can see it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, I just posted. Oh, sorry, I just posted this this one like an hour ago. Um, and basically, it was only to illustrate. You know, right now I'm, I'm a mega bull on uranium. I think most of you, the people know that. Um, but I tried to you know to to align these two charts here, where we have the the, the uranium miners compared to the the metal itself, and then you have the gold miners compared to uh, it says XAG here, but that's not correct. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, where did it go? There it is. Sorry. Um, I just fucked up. Okay. And then uh, you, you can see the correlation, you know, when you look at it right away. So, so uh, this was the bottom at in 16, you know, uh, and at that point, you know, both the miners in uranium and gold shut up and then it went back down here again. And then, of course, we had the big crash in 2020, March, and we saw the same thing. So, so, so what this tells me is that, you know, whenever uranium minus, uh, the, the uranium minus is gonna explode again, you know, in relation to the metal itself, silver and gold mines will do the same, more or less. So, uh, so, so yeah, this was basically what I, I was trying to say. Um, uh, have have you tried that, charting yeah. uh, like URA versus GDX? No, I haven't, but we can easily, easily. Yeah, let's that. try throw that up there and see what that does. Because um, gonna... <clears throat> that looks like it split you. Yeah. Just going to yeah, try to do it go. again here. GDX. Yeah, like just to see. I was, I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm just looking at it. Uh... But so I think if you, yeah. in the bottom of 2020, URA would, would have been a basically where I bought it or where <laughs> we bought it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's where I swap yeah. my uh, I swap my gold and silver companies for uranium and and natural gas and oil. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, also, you know, uh, and, and remember, you know, back in the March 2020, gold and silver mines performed very good. Yeah. But, they did. you know, uranium did like four times better more or less right so that's actually uh that would have would have been very good if you uh, you know went into uranium compared to to gold and silver but uh but yeah you have this almost uh 200 percent sorry but still you know it's uh so both miners did very good but uh uranium just once again you know outperformed gold and silver mm -hmm. at that point as well so i was just curious on that ratio because you had them separated to see which one was up, was going to outperform yeah yeah exactly but looking at this right if if we can again break this level here mm -hmm. you know i think i think uh yeah uranium is going to outperform yet again uh, i know i i think you so when i look at uranium and whenever i do a ratio and try pricing against other assets it just looks like a, a complete beast it's like yeah, it does it does it is so I, beastly i think i wrote on twitter as well i haven't found any um ratio yet you know where uranium is not the ones in charge so it's uh mm -hmm. it's actually it's it's quite impressive actually it really is yeah we also um i know you you chart a lot of uh soft commodities and stuff too so maybe after we start you know looking at uranium and stuff we can head up and look at soft commodities next because um i don't think a lot of people talk about soft commodities no so no much. It's very underlooked. I mean, it's. Uh, yep. It's. Uh, I mean, it's. 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 It's not as sexy, you know, as Bitcoin, uranium, and gold and silver, but there is a lot of money to be made in soft commodities over the next five years. I, I a agree. A lot of money. I totally agree. Totally but, agree. But you will not see those. Uh, you will not see these uh, ten percent gains per day. Or so it will be a slow, steady grind. But it it will be very low volatility. But it will. It's very good. It's very very good. Mm -hmm. For sure. Just before we go to the soft uh, commodities, this is you know the uh, the uranium spot against uh, silver, and I'm uh, I have posted this before as well. I'm a big silver bull, but if you look at this one from a, a uranium point of view, I mean it's uh, uranium is, is going to outperform silver in a big way. It's uh, do you, do you think that we're gonna just blast out of here with uranium like very very soon, or do you think? it's going to pause here for a little bit and then go, or who knows? I mean, it's a lot of people ask me timing questions. 
Yeah, I think we'll get the classic breakout and then some back testing on this, uh, you know, this uh, basing zone here, and then we will start to to outperform again. Um, and so that's how, that's how I see it, basically. I know I know we're looking at a lot of ratios and whatnot. Do you think that what's coming up is going to be an outperformance of uranium while precious metals and all these other assets that it gets priced against goes up with it? Yep. You think it's just going to yes. outrun everything? Yes, I certainly do. Just like it did back in March 2020, uh, more or less. You know, Both uh, metals went up and both miners went up. But again, uh, uranium outperformed them by, by 2x or so. So yes, for sure. I, I see that it's very likely is what is going to happen. Yeah, I do agree. Is there is there any other asset in the in the market that you think could outperform uranium? I, I'm never going to say no because nothing is 100. percent But I think one that that could surprise people is actually pl uh, platinum. I think we talked about that as well, you know, so, uh, uh, on the previous show. But platinum again, you know, people are talking about oh, platinum is getting you know outfaced because we're going totally electrical. But then I always reply, you know, just look at oil, right? They try, they they're going to face that out right now. But oil is just absolutely going on a on a tear, you know, for the last two years. And I think you know, I think the the demand for platinum will go down, but I think the supply will go very low. So and and that will of course increase the price for platinum. So I think platinum and especially some platinum miners could do could do very well. I don't know if it will outperform uranium, but uh, it will do very good. Uh, what, what about the like uranium to um, platinum ratio? Do you ever look at that? I have all the ratios, but uh, so I look at them from time to time. But it's been mm -hmm. it's been some time since I looked at platinum, so we can have a look. Uh, we can just take that one. Yes. Oh yeah, you can see. So this is basically, you know, if we if, if we remember uh, silver from the last slide, you know, this is basically where we are right now regarding silver. Mm -hmm. This here, so we will get, you know, a bounce back test and then go again. If you go back to the silver chart of the, uh, the silver ratio. So yeah, this I is just, I just, yeah. Yeah, th this is showing us that uranium is probably going to outperform platinum. Yeah, in it, the it, short it, term, it probably. Yeah, exactly, in the short exactly. term. But then again, I think, you know, even though I think platinum is only like $850 or so right now, mm -hmm. I still have an end target, you know, within the within this decade at around, you know, six, 7,000 if uh, if everything plays out. So I, so, I, I, I agree. Yeah. I, I'm I a huge platinum bull. Yeah, I know, huge. I know. And yeah. remember, what, if, if, you, if you go from like 1,000 to 6,000, you know, over like, let's say eight years, just imagine what, what that would do to the miners, just like, yeah, any other metal, right? It, it's it's going to be, yep. it's going to be big for sure. Yep. <clears throat> so this ratio, just to kind of look back at history, <clears throat> uranium did a crazy move in 2007, 2008, yeah. it looks like, where it went from a low ratio and went way up. Yeah, I think like this a, was actually, you know, the the one hundred and forty dollars oh, the peak. Yeah, the the, the one hundred and forty dollar peak in in uranium. This was this one. And mm -hmm. then you know this outperformance here is actually where platinum is crashing down big time. Ah, it had a big okay. crash from like uh, I can't remember exactly, but it, it was a very big crash. So, so this was so not it, you know uranium going up; it was actually platinum going uh, down a lot faster. So there, that, that's one thing I like to have like listeners and viewers kind of like sink in their head. You can make money during crashes if you're in an asset that is going down slower. Yeah, because exactly. if if one blows out and it's a very volatile uh, asset like this one is, and it blows out to the downside, you can swap this asset, pick this one back up, and then when it goes back to normalcy, you 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 gain all that value against other assets. That is exactly, like exactly. the whole purpose of investing. Yeah, is yeah. increasing your True. purchasing power. Yep. True. Yeah. Just like you would do with uh, gold and silver, right? If you have physical silver right now, I think when the ratio get, gets down to like twenty to one. You or something like that, thirty-one, whatever. You will take that silver and swap it to gold, and then vice versa. When the ratio gets high again, you swap back again. So, yep. So you keep trading back and forth, you know. So, what's the um, when you do all your analysis? What's the worst asset that you think you could be in? <laughs> that you that you that you you pull up and you're just like, man, this thing looks so bad. I mean, we've got. We've got Bitcoin, we've got the NASDAQ, 
we've got bonds we've got um I mean, obviously there's like real estate and all these other commodities and all that stuff, but is there one that you like pull up and you look at your ratios, you're like, man, this thing always looks like garbage. <laughs> no, I haven't really looked at it in that way. I mean, no. right now, as you mentioned, Bitcoin and the Nasdaq looks very sick, but they are very correlated together. You know, if the Nasdaq mm -hmm. drops, then Bitcoin drops. So that's how it, how it works. Um, but I think, I actually think, you know, if you look at Bitcoin, I know a lot of people, people hate on Bitcoin right now, but uh, but if 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 we get down to I, I think I've posted that as well like half a year ago or or a year ago if you can get down to like eight thousand on the Bitcoin you actually have a a good entry if you want to re-enter or buy for the first time in Bitcoin uh, I'm not I'm not calling a bottom there but but if you look at uh, from a charting perspective you have around the ten k mark eight k mark you actually have uh, some pretty good um, some pretty good uh, opportunities at that point. Mm -hmm. And if you just remove everything here, it's just uh, gonna lock scale it. I think lock scaling is a bit better. Uh, maybe not. Just one second here. I mean, this is when you get back to these uh, to these levels over here, uh, like this. So this was the big move where where a lot of, including me, I bought you know this this breakout right here. Mm -hmm. So if you get back to like this eight uh, k again, seven k, whatever you want to call it. Then actually, it's a good buying opportunity. So I think Bitcoin right here is just—it looks very bad to me. You have a standard bear flag and so on. Yeah, yep. I think you have seen that. Yeah, same here, bear flag. It's just bear flag upon bear flag and so on. But if you get down here and you want to get into Bitcoin, it's not a bad place to buy, in my opinion. So it's good to know. Yeah. So, uh, but then again, you know, it's a it's a high risk, high reward kind of play, right? But uh, but you know, if it doesn't matter if it's Bitcoin, silver, or gold, whatever. Once you get back, you know, to these trend lines on a chart, you know, it's you often get a a good bounce for sure. So it's it's very tradable here at these levels uh, down here. Yeah, and that that could be kind of the large first breakout as well. And I'm not pro Bitcoin by any means, but from a fractal perspective, it's a big move comes all the way back, and you could see even a larger, a pretty large move to the upside. Yeah, exactly. And you, and you see, you see, yeah, exactly. You see that over and over on, on, on charts, right? You get the big breakout and a lot of people are making money. And then, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the retail is buying at the very top as always. Yep. And then you get a retrace to, to the breakout, uh, to, to the breakout line, especially if it's a big one like this one. So then you, you kind of, mm -hmm. yeah, you kind of have to have to buy these levels here if, if you want to. But uh, what about um, soft commodities? What what have you been seeing there? I, I'm interested to know about soft commodities myself because, you know, I kind of look at them. I look at like cocoa futures and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and they look really good. Like you've got, yeah, yeah exactly. <clears throat> I mean, I've been, uh, I think, for like a year or two. I have been a, a huge bull on 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 cocoa, uh, especially, but um, but it has been just grinding sideways. So it's been uh, it's been uh, very tough to 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 invest in cocoa. But I think if you look at this one here, it's uh, it's on a log scale, uh, as you can see. It's uh, what is it like, thirty year long uh, yeah. trend channel here, very defined, well defined. You have the the tops here, 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 and so on. So it's very well defined. And I think we're coming to an to a very big decision point right now. You know, with this blue resistance, that's market red. It's much more easy. We have this red resistance line here. And the bottom of the the trend line. So either way we go, if if we break down here, you can short it the hell out uh, the hell out of it. And also if you if it pops to the upside, which I think it will, because everything else is going up, why shouldn't cocoa go up? I mean, then you can actually have a have an excellent investing here. If you let's say you you buy in the breakout at at around twenty eight ish, I mm -hmm. think you can ride it all the way up to the top here. You know, over the next four years or five years time. So you're talking. 3x more or less right yeah you think a move, a move similar to 2001 to 2003 4 somewhere like something yeah like it could easily be yeah very yep. easily be yeah for sure and also i think it would actually go faster because you have you have like six years you know where it did nothing so yeah. you have a, a very very big base and once it breaks you know you have you have bias over six years all agreeing all right we have to go higher so 
that would even make it more explosive, I think, uh, with regard to Coco. Do you, how are uh, you playing this? Like, what are you buying? Like an ETF? Are you like how do, how yes, do you play? Yeah, I'm Coco? buying. I'm buying an ETF. Uh, it's a German ETF, the only one I can find actually. Um, so that's the one I'm buying. Uh, and right now, I'm I'm actually very very close to buy uh, <laughs> because I've been. This is the past what is it? The past half year where we have this uh, the setup here, and yeah. I was waiting for the break, and then we back tested right now. So this. What I'm looking at right now is when we get out of this orange, oh, this orange uh, trend on here, then I think you can go long with a stop right below this formation here. So you're risking two hundred dollars more or less in order to win. It's actually a big risk we won't play. Yeah, here. it's it's in order big. to win. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very big. It's over like a couple thousand. It looks like. Yeah. So you can let's just <clears> do it very very quick and rough here let's say you can uh, you are risking what is it risk reward yeah you can see it's it's for 24 to 1 yep so th this setup you can take all day and print money more or less if you see this setup because you only have to win one out of every 24 to break even and yep. i will guarantee you that that this setup will be a winner a lot more often than one out of every 24 yes. so uh, yep I agree. So, uh, so yeah. Coco and also, you know, yeah, it looks very, very good. It but it's, really uh, it's, good. A, it's, it's a very slow performer. It's very grindy. So don't expect, you know, these, uh, don't expect uh, like uh, five or 10% a day like you do in, in, let's say, Bitcoin or silver at some point. It would be very slow, but it's a very good way of bal balancing out your portfolio with, uh, with some stability for sure. Mm hmm. What about something like, uh, do, you, do you follow wheat or corn or any of those other soft commodities that, or any other ones that you like, I should say? Soybeans or? Yeah, actually I've, uh, I have <clears throat> marked, you know, uh, coffee, um, which is also something that I bought, you know, at the bottom here, I can't remember exactly, but I, have, I had a trade on for like a hundred percent during this move up here. And right now you can see again, you know, we have, uh, we have had like a almost, one year long bull flag, more or less, breaking out, and now we are back testing again. You know the the, the standard back test here. Mm -hmm. So if this starts to to curl up again, you know, and to con to confirm the back tests, I think you know coffee will be will go a lot higher, a lot higher actually, because if you zoom out, we go on the monthly. You can see where we are right now in the big overall uh, fifty year uh, pricing. I think when we break this flag here. I think we'll yes. go to the to the top at 300, and I think yep. this is the fourth time we get to the to the top. And I think that's going to break. And when it does, you yep. know, I think you can easily see, you know, go from three to 600 within two years, and then maybe some going, you know, retracing a bit and so on. But I think you know, once you know, it's it's a 50 year old re resistance line, so it's not uh, it's not you know a small one. So I guess coffee. Could be a luxury in like ten years. Do, do you think? It could be. Do you think six hundred might may even be too conservative? Like, and, and the reason I'm I'm asking that is, um, if you look at the energy cri kind of the energy crisis that's going on around the world and natural gas prices and all that stuff, do you think the that kind of those problems will work their way into food prices or soft commodities? Oh, for sure. Like we see in wheat <clears throat> and so on and sugar, which I can show you later. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. I mean. Uh, uh, I think, you know, they, I mean, the, the central banks are trying to raise interest rates in order to fix inflation, but I think the main contributor to inflation is energy and that you, you can't fix that by, uh, by increasing rates. I mean, it, maybe, maybe a little, but you know, we have to fix the core, which is right now that we are in lack of overall energy because we have shut down so much oil and, and gas, uh, exploration and production. So, uh, and you're not going to fix that by increasing rates. No, for sure not. Mm -hmm. So, but the reason with my uh, with the 600 target was just my first target because if you measure this, uh, if you make a let's see if I can remember exactly, yeah. So this is the bottom of the bull flag to the top, and then you measure you know from the bottom of the uh, of the flag, you see you get 575 for the first move up, and then we get some retracement. And yes, I think we will go a lot higher because uh, we. We've been seeing a lot of movements that correlate with 3.618, uh, 
across a different, a whole bunch of different um, sectors and commodities and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, that would make it, <laughs> that, that would blow it way up there. And that's kind of what I'm expecting because I'm seeing it in natural gas. I'm seeing it in these energy type movements. And it's like, well, you know, that could happen in some of these food, you know, food commodities or soft commodities. So. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. And as mentioned, uh, I, I think, you know, coffee mm. in 10 years time will be a luxury. I mean, it, it, I mean, right now we drink it every day, right? Because I ah, can just make a cup of coffee. But I think this will something, uh, coffee will might be something we drink, you know, on special occasions like, uh, I don't know, a birthday or whatever. It sounds a bit harsh, I know, but it will, it could be very expensive, very, very expensive in the future. So, and I, I remember last time you were talking about hogs. How is that? Oh, yeah. I haven't How actually looked at it. I haven't looked at it in like, uh, I think actually I've, uh, I need to go to some. Because you, you were talking about that last time. And I just want to see how that thing's going. Because I. Oh, th yeah. There it is, actually. Yep. This is on a log scale, remember? No, it's not log scale. Sorry. It's even on the regular. That's even better. Yep. Look at that. Uh, that's, uh, that's not good if you like pig, for sure. That's not good. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you like bacon, this is bad. <laughs> this is very bad. Actually, you know, bacon, you know, in in Denmark, you know, before, uh, like two years ago, uh, you know, a pack of bacon would cost like one dollar, more or less. Now it is at least double that, if you can find it, at mm -hmm. least. And also Denmark is a, a country that produces a lot of bacon. We have a, a lot of pigs here in, uh, and farming here in Denmark. So already now, you know, it's a double in price. And uh, I, But this looks like it's ready to go. <laughs> it's ready to go yeah for sure it is you know once we clear this uh zero point what is it four or five ish yeah it's ready to go it's uh, I, I totally agree wow that looks good yeah I, I took a quick look i think it was whatever lean hogs yeah and then i was like man this looks good i got to bring this back up <laughs> yeah exactly and again it, about, it comes back to energy oh, so yep you, so it, like it, here, here's another question i know I, we're seeing all of these soft commodities strengthen. We're seeing uranium look strong. Oil, natural gas, they're using all these devices, strategic petroleum reserve releases to hold everything down. Do, are, are, yeah. do you think that we are entering like a massive inflationary period by looking at these charts? Is that yeah, what it's could, pointing to? I, th I think we could be, yeah. I think in a year's time, you know, I, I think, Uranium spot will be at least uh, three digits, uh, three digits for sure. So that's a double at least. Um, mm -hmm. And I think uh, oil is going to follow. Uh, I think gas may, I don't know about gas, but but at least oil and and uh, and uranium will be higher. Uh, gas could also be, but I think uh, I think all these uh, very big moves that we have seen in Europe um, might uh, might slow down a bit for some time before. We might go higher again, depending on how they solve it. If they can't solve it, I, I don't know. I think so. natural gas will be slower where you guys are at, and I think it will be speed us up moving up in uh, Henry Hub. Yeah, uh, true. Uh, I think so. That's too, what I because, think. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, uh, I think so too. Because I think you know the the German one year forward gas prices was last week one thousand euro per. I can't remember the exact uh, unit, uh, but three days later it had uh, it had dropped by fifty percent. So I think, you know, all the, the big uh, companies and whatever they have now bought what they need to have in order to survive uh, through the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, you know, next year we have to go through the same again. So, so we will see. So you've got sugar up there. Yeah, it's sugar. Good. <clears throat> it's looking very good, yeah. Yep. And this was also one that I posted like two years ago uh, uh, where, where I also had a trade on. Uh, uh, where about the bottom of this uh, trend on here? It's uh, actually, it's a perfect test in my book, at least. It's a perfect test of the lower trend line and the wedge. So I bought it here, actually together with some colleagues, and we hold it for like half a year or so. I can't remember exactly where we where we sold, uh, but it looks like it wants to go again. Uh, you have uh, mm -hmm. you have this bull flag, you know. So if we just do do a standard measure, the next possible target, you know, could be roughly thirty, and we are at eighteen right now. So, okay. So, uh, what is was there any pattern that was developed last bull market from 2000 to 2011 is what it looks like. 
did, was there like an expanding wedge or something that I'm seeing back there or anything? I don't know. I'm just kind of that because we have know. the declining wedge from the consolidation yeah. period. What about a line that goes all the way across at like um, a, re, a support resistance line that goes all the way sideways at about where it's at almost, right? Yeah, exactly. 16. Yeah, just uh... <clears throat> Yeah, we can move it up a bit, but roughly here. Yeah. Yep. And we are flagging right above it, you know. So yep. and often when you see that, you know, a flag above a key resistance, it means that, you know, that is the that will be the floor for many years to come. So yeah, it's gonna be a launching pad to, to jump yeah. off of too, is what I would yeah, for sure. it as. Yeah, yep. I totally agree. So this is the first leg up in my view. Then we get the first, yeah, then we get the uh, the third and then the fifth wave uh, in like five years time or so. But again, so, wow. going back, so we've going got, back to Coco, yeah. We've got Coco looking good. Lean Hogs looking good. We've got Sugar looking yes. good. What about like corn or something like that? Do you ever look at corn? <clears throat> Soybeans, yes, corn, or wheat? Yeah. Actually, um, so this was, you know, the this top here was, you know, when Russia invaded Ukraine. And I also, I also said that, you know, Everyone was talking about corn and wheat at that time, but I'm, I was going. I was saying that either we, you know, we pause here for a second, or we come crashing down a bit, because this uh, this move here is is all as always. It's very news based, and it's only yep. trading. These are traders, more or less, right? Uh, so then we often, you know, retrace all the way back to the scene of the crime, as uh, as, I like, as I like to say, which is you know this point in time, right? Yep. Here, it's right here, right? So. And, and where are we right now? We are at the same. We are at the same level before the big move up, and this happens over and over again. So, so, uh, so I think you know wheat and corn should start to should start to grind its way higher again uh, over the sense. next uh, over the next uh, yeah month or years for sure. Do you so, so. do you think it's better to play these things directly or? to play them through like agricultural companies that actually produce this stuff. Like what, what do you think would be a better play in your opinion? I think it's, uh, I think it, I think it should be looked at that uh, in the same view as if uh, some people only invest in physical gold and silver because it's, it's a lot more, it's a lot more safe and, and steady. But if you really want to have the big gains, you know, the big where you take a big leap mm -hmm. in your portfolio and so on, then you should always play the miners. But that is, uh, of course, higher risk reward, as we have seen with the silver miners for the past one and a half year, it, they have been destroyed, right? So, so, so uh, you have to, you have to, you have to know the game a lot better if you go into miners compared to the real stuff, for sure. What about like fertilizer companies? Because, I mean, if food prices go up. They're going to be able to afford more fertilizer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you think fertilizer companies might be a good spot to be looking to? I don't know. I haven't actually look, looked into fertilizers that much. So I, I, I okay. haven't, any, haven't had any knowledge, you know, any charting in my head that I can, that I can show. Uh, but as far as I know, you know, fertilizers, they, uh, they, uh, it's, uh, it's made of uh, like gas, right? Not gas and so on. Uh, so some I think of it. You, yeah, some, some of it, it yeah, exactly. Yep. So I think if, if those prices are very high, you know, then uh, yeah, they have a big cost, you know, but the but that cost will of course be sent on or onto the uh, to, to the farmers and so on. So yep. So, so yeah, that could be a very good uh, trade. Buy it, when or the, <clears throat> buy it when the costs are high, and the when they come down, their margins expand, mm, and when yeah. food prices go up too. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. Yeah, and food prices in Denmark has just gone ballistic. Uh, I said I said that last time as well. But it's uh, yeah, it's very tough. Uh, not yet, but you know, everyone is talking about it, and uh, and yeah, and it is really it's scary to see actually. You know, you know, food. Which if you can't get food, you die, right? So it's uh, it's it's very scary times that we live in, um, and especially for people who has who are you know doesn't have a lot of uh, money and so on, and and uh, they, they are getting hurt a lot because you know. If they before this crisis had like thirty percent going to to food and, and 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 other things, they might have like to use sixty percent of their pay now, compared to the wealthy. You know, they might have spent like zero point one percent before, and they spent like zero point two now. So they they don't they don't care at all. So, right. 
So it, it's very scary for people in the lower <laughs> lower ranking of uh, yeah, whatever you want to call it. So it's very scary. Yeah. So what other what other areas do you see opportunities in? Like, um, do you think we're a little bit early on precious metals to start jumping in that or? What about the physical metals? What about, you think that's a good time to start looking? Just, to, I mean, just go physical? <laughs> Quote, yeah, I mean, let's physical. go physical. Yeah. yeah. That's an old song, isn't it? I can't remember. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But I think I just, just before we got on here, I, I just made this chart really quickly. I'm just going to put on monthly here. So this is how I see it right now. You know, I, I see with regarding to gold, um, what we see right now, you know, we had this big pop back in like two years ago in 20, where we reached uh, almost 2100 uh, gold. Uh, and then we went straight back again, you know, below this previous top here from 2011. And now we're just grinding sideways more or less for like two years. And I think, you know, what we, what we saw back in, in 2008, we had this big pop as well, you know, getting above this previous high from the 80s and then back again, you know, and then just grinding sideways a bit different formation, I know, but then we grind it sideways for two years and then we popped again. And I think if we add in, you know, this long term trend line here, you know, we have the the bottom here in 20, there it is. And then we have these peaks here. Just gonna mark them up so it's much more easy to see. So we actually have a perfect trend channel here, more or less on, uh, on the log scale. So I think we're coming to an, an end right here, right now for gold, mm -hmm. as you can see, it's all squeezing down to this, when we touch this, uh, this trend line here. And I am somewhat biased for gold because I love gold and silver, but I think it's a very good place to buy here again, you know, if you mm -hmm. want to have uh, physical gold and silver. And also if you look into, to miners, if you, if you look at the, um, we can go back to the, uh, the ratio, mm -hmm. this is the, uh, again, the GDX plus GDXJ divided by, by gold. And we are again, you know, at that sweet spot just before everything starts to, to really move. So I think if you want to get in early and have a somewhat higher tolerance for, for the gold and silver miners, you can, you can get some decent entries right here, but, but you should expect that you can still see like a 30 or 40, 30 percentage drawdown before you get the big move. But, uh, but this, this is, uh, if you are contrarian, yes, I think you should definitely go into to gold and silver right now. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's, a, it's, it's very risky to buy, you know, on the way down like this, but uh, that's uh, when the big gains are made, so. Yeah, catching a falling knife. You can, you can wait for it to bottom and then start to turn back up and then buy it into that strength as it comes back up. Yeah, you can, for could, sure. Could be one, sure. Yeah. one tactic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think if you can start to, 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 to grind sideways and then start to curl up here in like over the next four to five months or the remaining of 22, then it's, look, it's gonna look really, really good in my view. But, uh, what about, but I think we have to, yeah. What if you take that off logarithmic? What does it look like? Cause I know we're playing with ratios here and you have it on yeah. log, it looks like. What does it look yeah. like without log? Okay, it's more or less the same. <clears throat> and I then can you back way out? Yes, oh. like back uh, way, yeah. way out. Here we have it, yeah. Okay. So this was the peak back in, uh, well, this was the peak actually in 2011 for gold. Yeah, so we are we are way down there compared yeah, to exactly. its previous peak. I mean, way down there. Yeah. yeah That's let's uh, say you, we're, let, man, sorry. <clears throat> what's, what's it at right now and how and what multiple could it go up to hit the previous high? <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's way down there. Let's say we have uh, two scenarios, gold goes to zero, or it goes back to the previous high of this ratio. I mean, it's almost not funny to look at, right? But it's, uh, or actually it is, but uh, let's see. It's a bit difficult for me to, to align. I cannot get the bottom up. Ah, uh, oh, Jesus. For some reason I cannot get it to smaller. Oh, I'm just, I'm just okay. gonna uh, just gonna measure it instead. Instead, I'm just gonna measure it instead. We are looking at roughly. Let's take the peak. That's the peak. So we have like, four hundred percent. You know, and that's 
that's an minors. outperformance against gold. Outperformance by minors, yeah. And I think yep. you know, gold over the next this decade will be a lot higher than we are right now. I just, I, I just, I can't see a reason why it shouldn't be higher. But then again, nothing is certain, but but I think gold will be a lot higher. So, so let's say you know, gold doubles. Yep. You have an 8x on the miners. So. Yep. That would be a 10x, right? Yeah, a more or less a 10x. Yeah, depending yeah. on where you. Where you, where you stop it, but eight to 10 X on the miners if gold doubles from here, which I don't yeah. think is actually, <clears throat> it doesn't sound crazy, you know? I mean, yeah, for an sound, ETF, sound low to that, me, the but, ETF uh, does that. Individual companies exactly. can do more. Yep. Yeah, exactly. If you, if you get, if you can buy some good juniors, you know, they can do, <clears throat> I don't know, 50 X easily, hundred X easily compared to the gold. If you get them uh, the right junior miners for sure. Right. So, uh, so yes. Wow, so that's that's a big opportunity there. I, I just don't know if it's mm -hmm. done done yet coming down. Oh, no, exactly. I mean, it's tough. everyone is yeah. so bearish right now on gold and silver. I mean, if, and if everyone is bearish, I mean, I guess it's time to buy. But uh, but yeah, I think it's better to wait and see, you know, if you can bottom out in some way. And maybe you have to buy, a, maybe you have to get back in a bit higher. But again, you get a better risk, I guess, because you have to, you, you, you're not catching a falling knife. But you're trying to catch the bottom as it turns around and comes, starts to slope back up again. So I think yep. that might be a better way to, to do it. Um, because if, if we start to see a big crash, you know, let's say in the NASDAQ and so on, the gold and silver miners will get hit a lot harder, I guess, just like we saw back in March. Um, so then we could, we could see a quick spike down and then back up again like this one here. But uh, we have to wait and see. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm getting more bullish on it. And, mm -hmm. and I like when people are pretty negative. That's kind of yeah. where I start to thrive. That, so I'm, that's I'm, also I'm, one I'm, thing I learned, you know, over the past two years is that when everyone is talking shit or just, uh, you know, bashing down, if it's gold or silver or Bitcoin or whatever, then I know it's time to, to look at it and be interested. And same, you know, when everyone was bullish on Bitcoin, like, what is it, like a year ago? Uh, I knew at that time, okay, I, ha I have to look for my exit right now. So I, I, I sold all my Bitcoin at uh, 55 thousand or so roughly it wasn't the top but you know i just everyone was so bullish you know it was the next best thing you know ever created by humankind <laughs> at that point at least yep. so uh and then i sold uh when i saw the 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 correct move or the wrong move of the chart i sold mm -hmm. and i was happy so and and at this particular time what one two or three things would you consider to be the best opportunities right now Oh, for sure, uranium. We haven't talked about <clears throat> uranium that much in this uh, interview here, but for sure, uranium. It's, um, mm -hmm. I think it is the last one of the energy commodities that is about to, to go. We have had oil, we have had gas, coal. No one is talking about go coal, but actually coal has been one of the best performers in the past two years. Uh, and I think uranium will be the next one that is about to go and outperform more or less everything that you can possibly imagine. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, uranium by, by far. Uh, but you have to expect, you know, regarding to uranium miners, you can have a day where they are up like 10%, and then the next day it's down 7%. So it's very volatile. So you have to you have to know your case and uh, the fundamentals behind uranium, and then just have a plan and sit through it. And then you will be, in my view, you will be rewarded heavily in five years' time. Even even before that, you can be heavily rewarded uh, regarding uh, yeah uranium for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And right now, if you had to choose between developers and or explorers or producers in uranium, which ones do you like? Do you like the best? Right now? Um, actually, I think I, I don't I don't have that uh, that many of the big, big names, let's say I don't mm -hmm. have uh, CCJ. I don't I have a few because it's a big company uh, and so on. But actually, I like, you know, the ones just below. Uh, like next gen, uh, of course, Denison is, is rather big as well. Next gen energy, uh, energy fuels, I like. And then I also like, you know, the smaller ones like Global Atomic. I think Global Atomic could be a major winner in this bull run for the uranium. And um, Can Alaska, I love, uh, I like very much. Um, so I have a mix, but mostly in the mid tier. And then I have some, 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 uh, some high risk plays on the smaller ones just to balance it out. But, uh, yeah, and it, it seems when I look at stuff, it looks like the developers have kind of, they're starting to move, coming mm -hmm. on up, obviously since 2020. 
And then the explorers, some of them are still really low, depending on which ones you're looking at. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So I think that I think that's a sign of where we're at in the uranium cycle, which means we're still very early. Camco is starting to take off. We can see that mm -hmm. in the charts. The developers are starting to come and then the explorers are just starting to bounce a little bit off their bottoms. So. Yeah, and typically you see the big the big blue uh, blue chips in this case, Cameco. They they start to move first, and then you see the mid the mid caps, and then the small cap, and then the micro caps. Just like you saw yeah. in crypto, right? You have the Bitcoin move, then the Ethereum, and then you saw all that other stuff, you know, going ballistic. So you will see the same here in uranium. So so yeah, yeah. The, the cool the cool thing I thought was uh, really cool, at least looking at it from the United States standpoint, is last bull market in uranium in two thousand seven in checkable deposits, the, the money that people had in their accounts was like $80 billion eight, around there, 100 billion, 80 billion. We have four and a half trillion right now. So we could see some <laughs> crazy, crazy moves in these small micro cap retail, you know, retail coming in and just blowing things up uh, as the money rotates and tries to seek returns. Yeah, that's so, insane yeah. because some, some of the small ones is like, they are like a 50 million market cap or so, even less. So try to squeeze uh, what is like four point something trillion down to those. Uh, I mean, uh, every uh, some percentage I mean, of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But that could be, yeah, wow, that's insane. So you said like like a hundred billion to like four point two trillion. Yeah, it was a, it was like a hundred billion, roughly speaking, uh, in two thousand seven. Now it's four and a half trillion. But that's yeah. insane. Or forty x, forty five x. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, wow, that's more uh, money in the system. That. Uh, and people yeah, wonder why we have was... uh, inflation, right? So, <laughs> yeah. yeah why, do, <laughs> why do we have inflation? Why do we so have that's inflation? Cam yeah. That's Camco there. Um, obviously, it looks like you got a big consolidation period going across this way. Now we're coming up. We've got that Livermore cylinder. A lot of people start mm -hmm. to uh, at least talk about. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. Do you, do you think sketch, that's so. do you think that's ready to break at some point, or think we're right around the corner from it? I think it. I think we still need some time because I think there is still some. If you have to look from uh, look at it from a bearish perspective, which you always have to do, you still mm -hmm. you still have this, uh, this head and shoulders here. I know I'm very bullish, but you still have to look at it in from the other standpoint as well, mm -hmm. and you have the neckline down here. So, so we could see if if the pattern plays out, we could actually see you know getting back and then dropping below. So. We, sh we shouldn't rule that out, but but I don't think it will happen. I'm, I may be biased, I know, but but I, th I still think that that is very unlikely given that we are in the biggest energy crisis for the past 50 years or so. So uh, so potential, so no. if, if, it, if you're looking at it from a bearish perspective, you could say head and shoulders, top there. Yeah, exactly. Potentially, could see but that. what would invalidate that, that head and shoulders top? Yeah, I mean, then we just uh, often you, you you have to break the head, and then you you often have that uh, invalidated. Um, so I think we need to 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 clear the the previous high here back in April, and then uh, stay above that for like a week or two without any big movements. Then we can say like, okay, this is the new floor, and then we should be ready to go again. Um, but I, I I hate when you when you when we break a big resistance level and then we just come crashing uh, spiking up and then down again really hard because often what you see that is that you get the spike up and then you get the hard back test and then we go back below again and then all of a sudden you might have a some sort of a bull trap on top of that so we have to I would I would like to see it get above stay there for like two two three four weeks and then be ready to go again. So. Do you see this pattern in any other uh, uranium companies the head and shoulder top? Uh, yeah, you you see you see that across the board more or less. Actually, you see this uh, head here, how it aligns with the uh, with the previous bull market, the lows and the resistance levels over here. So it's a very big level that we are right now. So I guess if, if and when we break that, you uh, oh sorry, you can see one second here. We have all these uh, over here, right? We have all these level here around this uh, 32 mark ish. Uh, so this is the one to break for Cameco. And when, when we are above that, I don't think we will go below it again, depending on how 
how it stays above, of course. But it's, uh, so we want to break thirty-two fifty and stay above it. Yeah, exactly, <clears throat> exactly. And then we have uh, we have broken this massive uh, resist uh, support and resistance zone over here. Mm -hmm. Same thing as for gold. If you re remember the chart from back from two thousand and and eleven, looks kind of similar where we have this major zone here. Um, but anyways, but I think uranium looks good, very good overall, very very good. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah. What else? What else are you looking at in the markets these days? Anything else that you're kind of eyeing a little bit, or or constantly watching, good or bad? Um, as we started with, you know, I think again, platinum is. Uh, I think I have to use all my anyways, but we have a very good, you know, if if I had to put one line on this chart, you know, it would be this one. And uh, going back to our talk we had at the beginning, you know, platinum looks very good at this point in time. Um, and if if we get a bounce here, you know, and start to break this formation over here for platinum, it's uh, it's game on in my book. So if 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 we can get above, you know, eleven hundred ish, even a thousand, then I think it's it, it's time to go for platinum. Um, would would you wait for the break or would you start buying it down here? I, I would start to buy down here. Uh, that's, that's I, 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 would, I would, yeah, I would, <laughs> I would buy. You know, the physical. I haven't bought the physical in a long time, but the miners and so on. I would start to to look for an entry on 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 the miners um, uh, at these levels for sure in platinum. Yeah, it looks good. I like platinum a lot. Yeah, yeah, me too. I don't know about the palladium. It's a bit of a, a messy chart, I guess. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's very difficult to chart. So, is that a shoulder head shoulders developing there where it could potentially go lower? Yeah, but it, it looks like it. But then again, it's 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 uh, often you want to have some sort of symmetrical structure to the to the head and shoulders. But this just looks a bit. It looks I don't know how to say it. It looks very messy. messy. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if uh, if it isn't head and shoulders, but. But yeah, it's very difficult to to look at this chart and say where are we going, right? So it's um, that's very very tricky. Yeah. So we'll. It's just a messy looking chart, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't know how to to make this chart other than maybe this channel here. That's all I can do. It's very messy. Um, so. Yeah, I know from a ratio perspective. It's pretty expensive in relationship to a lot of other assets. Palladium is, but I also know that the market balances are so still pretty screwed up for palladium. So it's a yeah. it's a rough one, and I don't really play too much in these rough ones. I, I in the uh, 2020 crisis, I swapped my palladium to platinum, mm, and nice. now I own platinum. So yeah, yeah, that was April of 2020. Okay, that's been a good uh, okay. Yeah, I, the way I convinced myself was the premiums also were pretty thin on platinum at that time. I was like, well, given the premiums and given where the price, the the ratios were, I said I'm going to do my swap. So. Yeah, and also you know <laughs> platinum was pretty cheap at that point. So yeah, it was ridiculous. Five hundred, six hundred below. That's cheap. Below the cost curves. Hmm. Yeah, I think the cost curve is uh, is around this eight hundred level. I guess. Yep. It depending is depending on the chart. So yeah, it's right there. Yeah. And I can't imagine and if South is, Africa yeah. had some sort of electricity problem or power problem because eighty no, no, percent, eighty no. percent comes from there. <laughs> so, a lot of risk. A lot of risk for uh, the supply of platinum. Yeah, I with, agree. With energy problems around the world. So, yeah. Uh, what else do you have? Anything else? No, I mean I, these are my these are my favorite topics actually. Um, and then I, I also try to look at it in a different, different way, you know, with uh, maybe gold in relation to uh, to GDP or to CPI or whatever. So uh, I think that gives a it gives a different perspective on on the commodity or the chart instead of looking at it in a pure price mm -hmm. perspective. So I think people should do that a lot more often, actually. Do you do you follow any of the the base metals at all? Do you have any opinions there? 
Yeah, I do follow follow copper a bit, but it's not my what I do that often. It's uh, it's mostly yeah what we have been discussing. But yeah. I, I, but I look at it every week uh, more than once still just to be on track of where we are. So so yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I don't really have much else. If I don't know if you have any final comments or anything else you'd like to to add or. No, oh, I, I think uh, I think that's fine. I guess uh, we did talk about some uh, something as boring as uh, sugar and uh, <laughs> and wheat and so on. But don't forget, you can make a lot of money in uh, in those uh, in those uh, commodities. Definitely, even, I agree. even though you will not see one single post on Twitter regarding that. Uh, that will mostly be you know gold and silver and Bitcoin and so on. But uh, it makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. And I'll. Uh, I'll look for some ways to play that for everyone too. Um, if you guys are part of the, the website, so I'll, I'll figure out ways how to play that. So yeah, it's definitely good value for sure. Definitely. Yep. Okay. Um, well, that's all I've got, uh, Casper. And, and if you don't have anything else, you know, I really appreciate you coming on the channel and uh, thanks for sharing your charts. I, I really like the cleanliness of your charts and definitely the long-term look and approach that you take. So very similar to what I would yeah. do, and uh, I think your charts are cleaner than what I that, than what I even you know than what I even do. So I just I kind of throw stuff on there, and I just look at the big picture. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. I'm like, okay, I'm going. And then you, I like how you tighten it all up. So it's good. Thank you. So if you want to follow uh, Casper, it's at Uslink on Twitter. If you want to follow him, guys, please do. <laughs> yep. All right, everyone. Uh, we'll catch you later. This is out from Finding Value, and thank you, Casper, for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.